Planning and Zoning Commission amended their bylaws to bring it up to uh, uh, current day. I mean, we uh, recodified the uh, city code and have kind of settled into a bi monthly meeting in even months. Uh, many of the references to uh, the, the month of the year were wrong and bylaws. So we just fixed it up. We had a type of minor changes. You have, should have a copy in your uh, package. Okay. Yeah, like requires, motion. Thank you. Yeah, requires a motion. Yeah. I'll just stop you. Make a motion that uh, we adopt the uh, bylaws for the Wimbledon County Zoning Commission. Second. And move to second and further discussion. Any discussion on the bylaws? This can be like one stroke, correct? Yes. All those in favor say aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Thank you. Motion carried. Thank you. Under old business, we have overnight parking downtown. Chief, you want to tell us about that? We discussed this at the last council meeting to uh, as to whether we should uh, add signs or remove the signs for the limited time parking in the downtown business district. Um, the recommendation was to meet with Adhoc and discuss uh, how they felt about it. Uh, that meeting took place, and uh, consensus with the Adhoc was to go ahead and uh, eliminate the no parking signs, uh, limited time parking signs in the downtown business district. So that's my recommendation. I so move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to eliminate the limited time parking signs in the downtown blocks 100 North and South Main. Further discussion? What, what was some of just the uh, general discussion, whoever happened to be at the meeting, uh, pros and cons? Well, we brought up the, uh, the uh, street sweeping, uh, snow removal. We talked about uh, the renters that live above the businesses parking, uh, taking up parking spaces for the downtown businesses. Um, and Gary uh, Sugar graciously uh, advised that he would send a letter to the uh, business owners in the downtown area, uh, letting them know um, that we were eliminating the, the parking signs for the We would like them to talk to their tenants about not parking in the uh, downtown business district during business hours and also advising them of the times that we clean the streets and stuff like that. So, and not just the business owners, but the property owners. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Additional questions? Tim, some of these signs are on poles that we drill holes after the new sidewalk is in. You'll pull the. Whoop. If they need it, we'll fill them with grout. Fill them with grout. Okay. Additional questions? If for some reason we change our mind later and go back to wanting to have those, is it a big deal? Just coming before the council and making that decision? Yeah. <coughs> All right. Hearing no further, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. As long as you want. Next item, item 10, new business. Concerns the hydropower contract. Greg, do you want to talk to us about this? Um, we receive uh, hydroelectric power from uh, the Western Area Power Authority through a contract with the Kansas Municipal Energy Agency. The current contract. Um, expires in 2024. Uh, earlier this year, actually agreed to extend that contract through 2054. And the value in doing that is not only is it a cost effective, reliable source of, uh, of electric power, but in the federal budgeting process, there's always pressure to um, privatize that and turn it from a cost based contract into a market based contract. So it, it helps protect our um, cost structure through 2054 for that power. This particular contract is with uh, KDA and WAPA um, 
for the uh, extending that contract <coughs> services to deliver that. And KMA serves as our agent in that process. And your recommendation is? To approve. Hearing Greg's information, what is your desire? I move that we approve this um, recommendation. Second. Been moved in and seconded to uh, approve the extension, is that correct? Yes. To approve the extension of this contract? Do we have any kind of recourse if there was some sudden change in power, um, such as <coughs> just a <coughs> real far fetched, but you know? There's a breakthrough in solar technology and it knocks the bottom out of the market. Now that's so inexpensive and the storage for it's so inexpensive that now nobody else can compete. Are we locked in still buying that? For the term of the contract, um, I can tell you right now this, the federal hydroelectric projects have some of them as early as the 30s, um, some of them were established in the 50s. And to give you an idea, of cost structure for capacity. We pay about $5.89 kilowatt through WAPA. We pay $20 and what is it, 29 cents, Larry, through uh, West Star. And energy costs are about the same. We're running at just over two cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so from a, from a cost standpoint, even if it the bottom theoretically did fall out and it was extremely cheap, you're still going to have capacity charges that I can't imagine would be any less than what, what currently exists. I read this uh, whole thing, sort of, I mean, I didn't understand all of it, but we're talking about WAPA being our agent for this. No, KMEA. KMEA, okay. KMEA being our agent, but, but even so, um, I mean, they would be the ones who would look at all of these fine point things uh, that they're having on here. I mean, there are lots and lots and lots of them and say, wait a minute, this, this isn't right here. Um, I'm, I'm kind of speaking around. Well, Camp Municipal Energy Agency is a joint action agency, which is a group of municipal electric utilities that form the agency to operate in their behalf and in their interests. But we wouldn't have to go to some smaller thing to the city attorney and say, what's your interpretation of this necessarily? I mean, they're acting as our agent. Yeah, well, the city attorney has looked at this. I looked at that. I mean, you could come to me and I'd say, let's go to KMA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I mean, That's no, right. KPA has legal staff that deals with. Okay, with, I, I'm not trying to. Like, yeah, contract and legal yeah, staff. Yeah, this is the issue. You know, I got really confused reading all of it, and, but that's me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bill, did they, did we come to you and you said let's go to KPA? Well, pretty much. I mean, I did review it and I didn't see anything that, that bothered me, no but there are a lot of technical details in there. Sure. Sure. I mean, no KPA. Additional questions? Roll call, please. Becky? Yes. Damo? Yes. David? Yes. Corey? Yes. Rick? Yes. Lane? Yes. Betty? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Motion carried. Item 10, new business B. Don't you think we ought to read this whole agreement? Just so we all have a good no. I have some kind of idea. You have done that. <laughs> 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 I have more comfort in Bill saying you refer to Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you wish to do so, and if you have trouble sleeping at night, this will solve that problem. <laughs> Thank you. Next is, uh, again, 10 New Business B, Ordinance 4981, non partisan election. Uh, I'm going to let Greg also tell us about this. Um, the 2015 Kansas legislature adopted a bill which moves local elections from April or spring elections to November or fall elections. Um, we, you as city council adopted charter ordinance number 20 to comply with that new statute. Uh, so the elections will be in November of odd numbered years. 
prior to that, all of the city election, or local elections for the city of Lindsburg were nonpartisan. Um, the assumption and what we were led to believe at the time was that we would remain nonpartisan. So Charter Ordinance Number 20 did not specify whether the election would be partisan or nonpartisan. We have since been informed that we need to specify whether local elections would be partisan or nonpartisan. Based upon the discussion back during the time of Charter Ordinance 20, the general consensus was that the election should remain nonpartisan and therefore the current ordinance you're considering this evening was drafted to that effect. The recommendation is if you want to remain nonpartisan elections, that you adopt um, ordinance number 4981. Motion to adopt ordinance 4981. Second. And moved and seconded on 4981. Further discussion? Greg, I'm going to ask about ordinance charter ordinance 20. Is this, we don't have to amend that in any way. This is just an additional ordinance to solve the uh, partisan problem. Correct. We. Yes, we followed up the Lake Kansas municipalities on this, and, and they said it would be just a regular ordinance. Yeah. So they did not need to be a charter ordinance. Okay, just want to be sure. Additional questions on ordinance? On the ordinance? Thank you. 4981. Roll call, please. Kelly? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Lane? Yes. Rick? Yes. Corey? Yes. David? Yes. Emil? Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Item 11, executive right. session and the other end. We'll move to uh, department head report starting with 10 public works. <coughs> well, again, I will be short. <coughs> um, the matter of bird. Pardon me? Well, I haven't been a lot uh, on my plate this month, but uh, 
other than caseload, we're up to 163 cases so far for the year. So been staying busy. Um, EMS continues to stay pretty steady. They're at 150 runs for the year, which is about 1.25 runs per day. So comparable to last year, 1.5. Okay. Is the 163 high, low, average for this time of year? About average. About average. So we're, we're staying busy. Uh, 20 of those were car burglaries, so we were quite a few burglaries there for an extended time. Um, so that, you know, the stats are keeping us pretty, pretty average right now. The, um, the only new thing I have, uh, we have uh, collected bicycles and uh, we keep them for a period of time, and then no, no one cl uh, claims them, and we destroy them. Uh, and we recently worked out a deal with Tackle that we would turn over our bicycles to Tackle, so we will hopefully be helping with Tackle here in the future. If you uh, yes. on bicycles, I don't know if they still do it over at Ellswood Corrections, so if they would take bicycles in whatever condition, refurbishment, and they would send them by the truckload to other countries or whatever. Yeah, we used to do that. We used to, uh, Dave from the streets department, we used to take them up to, to Ellsworth for us, but uh, kind of fell apart there for a while, so we just get rid of them. Do you think that the general public is aware that, I, and since I had a bicycle turn up, <laughs> I had a bicycle turn up in my yard that obviously didn't belong to anybody in the neighborhood. And that's when I learned that you do have a collection of bicycles. Do you think the community at large is aware that they have a bicycle missing, that perhaps a, a call to the police station is a good idea? Well, I'm hoping so. Um, most people, when their bicycles are missing, call the police. Uh, but not everyone does. Um, so, and some of the bicycles that we collect aren't in very good shape either, so some of them may not want the bicycles back. Uh, they may have gotten rid of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the police come pick it up anyway. So but uh, it's pretty pretty happy that we'll be able to help that on that part. Questions of I mean you can catch off hand did you have more? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, any questions other questions of public safety, Dan? Car being utilized yet? Yeah. It's up and running. Um, you know, lights, radio, camera, radar—they're all working in it. Um, we haven't got the cage put in yet, but uh, that's about it. Put cage in, mount roof for weapons, and we'll be pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, you traded the old one in. Is that correct? Yeah, kind of. Have we started code enforcement, or sorry, environmental code enforcement yet? Yeah, I've probably sent out about 12 lead letters um, for tall grass. So yeah, we've been hitting them pretty hard in the last week and a half. Well, tall grass, does that apply only to the front yard? No. Okay, thank you. Tall grass definition is 12 or 15 inches. 12 inches. Thank you. All? As a couple of you know, because you are members of AdHoc and Business Roundtable as well, we have partnered the CBB offices and partnering with the AdHoc businesses um, to do some marketing and through postcards. And we went through our first box of a thousand that we now have mailed out. And are partway into our second box of a thousand, so we're hoping to be done with those by the end of May. And in another month after that, we'll start a second round with different postcards, and we're receiving some response back from those already, so that has been really good. Um, at the Center Conference Center, we have been receiving a lot of phone calls um, recently for 2017 events and weddings, so that has been fabulous. And we are getting ready to host the end of this month an Indian wedding. Uh, for a family from India that will be bringing in busloads of people and doing their traditional parade down Main Street to the conference center and they'll just do a one block parade and they'll be releasing both floors of the facility for their wedding event. So that's something new and different. Um, they're actually bringing in decorators.
Chris from Dallas, Texas, so it's a big deal. Um, big fun for our community, something a little bit different. So along with that, um, the CBB office is also trying to partner with um, the conference center in ways that we utilize the conference center for visitors. Today we received a phone call from an officer at Fort Leavenworth, and as of August 9th, we will be hosting 120 foreign officers um, for a one-day event in tra traveling across Kansas. Their three stops will be the Presidential Library, Abilene, Linsburg, and Wichita. So we will have 120 foreign uh, officers visiting our community in August, and they will be spending an hour with us as all. But we are hoping to um, have them at the conference center and provide them coffee and Swedish pastries, and I'm hoping to stay home. We were talking about going to do a community tour, and that's something that was pretty short to give 120 <laughs> people something to eat and get them around the community buses. So we'll see how that goes. I may talk to them a little bit longer if we can, we can do that, but excited about those things. So um, we will have an updated sales plan for you by the next briefing. So things are going well. Additional questions, Holly, anything? Thank you, Holly. Appreciate very much. Thank you to all staff. Uh, those reports I think are very helpful and timely for, for that. And it's an opportunity for council to ask any questions that they may have been asked in the public or have seen things themselves. So, number 13, other? Are there other items from council? Do you wish to talk about this time? I'm not sure. I guess that'll be the time. I've been approached by a few golfers, just curious about updates on um, the status of the golf course with. Um, personnel change and what we're going to do and, and then also an update on the football subject. Is you were able to answer all of those for them? No. <laughs> I don't want to have a closing question. Well, the next last day is Sunday the 8th. Um, as we reported, it's uh, right now we're soliciting resumes <coughs> about to fill the position. We also have visited with uh, actually two different golf course superintendents at different golf courses about the possibility of consulting services. We've received one proposal, um, and hopefully we will have another one here to consider, probably not yet this week, but early next week, to provide uh, services during the interim period. Those services would primarily deal with um, green, when I say green maintenance, more of the chemicals and air, air firing and, and uh, that piece of it. And just kind of oversee to make sure that things aren't being missed at, at the golf course from a maintenance standpoint. Um, so, timeline, I can't tell you right now what the timeline is because, you know, it'll be open until it's filled unless we're directed otherwise. I've reached out to a couple contacts I had just sending information out and I appreciate anybody else that Betty you were in the business for, for a while, you know. Old, super, old superintendents are still wanted. So, uh, but yeah, if anybody has any contacts or anything, please direct them through. I can't be Greg and was able to give out some information that you provided me with. So, on the football side, I think it ended that was pretty clear in the letter at this point. It's, it's on hold until we, until we do something with the superintendent's position. In the meantime, would this be an opportunity for any of the longtime golfers to suit up again and, and maybe help where needed, or is there that opportunity or need, I guess, would be my question. And they, well, didn't, they didn't ask me that question. That's well, I'm going to answer some, I'm going to we'll, we'll take all the help we can get. I'm going to put it that way. I mean, from a low standpoint, we have that pretty well covered. You know, if they have expertise in turf grass, I mean, that's, that's where we're really going to be lacking is in the turf grass area, is because, I mean, that's a special knowledge that we just don't possess as staff. You know, the chemicals, uh, you know, whether it be fertilizer, treating for fungus, treating for, you know, whatever particular issues may come up. That's going to be where, um, that's why we're looking at the consultants to, for that particular area. I mean, there's always things like maintaining flower beds and stuff like that that have been done over the years. I mean, that's always needed whether we have a golf course superintendent on staff or not. So, um, 
The biggest help would be for everyone to grab their clubs and five of their best buddies mm -hmm. and go play around at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great, if they did have a wish or a desire to help in some way, who would they contact? Say so all. Okay, okay. Okay. Put that word out there, Kate, just the one that can We just bought this thing. <laughs> <laughs>